that just feels weird. All right, so let's see, where is, why can't I ever find anything? This is not what I want, but it'll be close to what I want. All right, uh, no. So um, what I wanna do, I'm gonna quickly go through what your assignments are gonna be for next week, because that's gonna help you when you go into your breakout rooms to talk about the stories we read for this week. So let me switch over to, is this it? Is it? No. Hold on. English two. Go in. All right. So this week we have our course learning objectives, which you can read, our agenda, um, which we're going to talk about our stories. Um, and then we are going to talk about our first essay. So you only have a few assignments this week. And uh, the major assignment is you're gonna be writing your very first paper. And I'm telling you about it now because when we go into breakouts to talk about the stories, depending on what you, the story that you like the most, you're gonna to wanna to pay extra attention to things when you're in discussion with your peers. So in this first essay, You'll be choosing two of the works, and that can be anything that we've read last week, anything we read for today. You can choose um, anything that we've read so far, poems or short stories, and you're going to write a comparative analysis. So you definitely want to pick two that you can write about, right? So, you know, there are some that naturally go together, some that you'd have to really, really stretch your mind. So pick some that go together. Um, you're going to want to do research on the authors and their background if you haven't already. So, because we didn't do research on the authors for the ones that we read this week. Um, and you're going to see if their background plays any role in the poem or short story. And then you're going to compare and contrast the literary elements, the stuff that we just talked about in each story. And then finally, you're going to determine how each author represents the human condition and if any similarities exist between the works. So remember that I'm looking for a five paragraph essay, at least. You can write more than that. Um, you could use Christmas Carol. Good question, Keith. Yes, you could use a Christmas Carol. Um, so you want a five paragraph essay, at least. So that's about, it's gonna be about two and a half pages. You're gonna have an intro paragraph with an arguable thesis, right? Remember a thesis is an opinion that you defend without using I, me, or my. Um, you're going to have three points that you're going to prove with evidence. And I've given you the three points, right? Background, um, literary elements, and then human condition, right? So you have your three points already. You just have to have your proof. Um, and then you're going to have a conclusion. So a formal essay in English does not include I, me, my, us, we, our. And it does not include you, your, or your. And you do not want to copy any work from any source without attribution or citation because I'll find it. And then you're going to be loading that bad boy up into Blackboard before class next Monday. I am free to look at um, rough drafts throughout the week. If you want to send me rough drafts, we have an excellent writing center that works with you remotely. If you would like for them to take a look, you get extra credit points for doing that. If you, if you take it to them, they won't help you write it, but they'll give you points on um, structure and, and things like that. So I want to make sure that I give that to you. Next week's reading assignments are not actually reading assignments. There's only one thing that you're reading, which is a, a very, very short piece uh, by Jamaica Kincaid. The rest of these are videos, and they are by YouTubers that you may have heard of or may not have. Um, Mad Lads um, is a Scottish dude named Count Dankula. Sam Manella does all these things about history. Model Citizens, which is um, uh, Autodale's... Uh, is a short fiction. Our Future Without Privacy is also like a tiny little uh, documentary. Uh, Modern Education, which that is spelled correctly there, um, and Backwater Gospel. So these are all, um, we're gonna be moving into environment and what um, causes. Uh, so you have some videos to watch, one tiny reading, and then your paper. And that is all that is due aside from, you have a flip grid, which you're gonna talk about your favorite video of the ones that we watch. All right, so everybody knows what's next. I have a question not relevant to the instructions for next week. <laughs> sure. What's for flip grids, do we have to comment on other people's videos with a video? This time you do not, because this time you need enough time to watch all the videos. So I figured most of you 
um, wouldn't it, because what makes that tricky when you comment is when other people don't comment. And so in order to do this one, you have to, had to watch all the videos and you have until next Monday to watch. So this particular one, you don't have to watch. You don't have to comment on anybody else's. You get extra credit if you do, but you don't have to. Yeah, sometimes Flipgrid like gets buggy and it doesn't let me submit comments. I don't know if anybody else is having that problem, but I know for our first Flipgrid, it didn't allow me to make any like video comments. If that ever happens, just do the text, like write in text if you okay. can. Yeah, if that ever happens. And, and like this week, you don't have to do it for other people just because of the nature what I'm asking, you need you need time to watch the videos. The videos are, I think the longest video in there is 10 minutes. Um, and they're really, like, I think they're really interesting. I think you'll find them very interesting. They're all kind of like dystopian. You know, some of the like videos are, they make you think. They're they're designed to make you think. So you don't have to watch them all in one day. You know, there's, there's a few to watch each day. Okay, sound good? All right, so what we're gonna do is you have for this week, those are our terms. We read these stories. The Ones Who Walk Away from Omelas by Ursula Le Guin. We read Harrison Bergeron by Kurt Vonnegut. We read the short uh, story, The Lottery by Shirley Jackson. And we read Primary Substance by Sergio Gutierrez Negron. So which was your favorite? Which one did you like? Don't all jump into, how many of you liked The Ones Who Walked Away from Omelas the best? Anybody? Gosh, you're all so quiet. All right, what's it about? What's the Omelas about? Don't make me call on you. Yes, I will. Rebecca, Rebecca, what's Omelas about? I can see Rebecca's arm and your ceiling. I can see your arm and feeling, Rebecca. There she is. Yeah, wait, what? Give me one second. Rebecca, what is Omelas about? Um, wait, can you give me like one, one second? I have to go help someone really quick. Are you at work, I'm, Rebecca? What? Are you at work? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Liz, what's Omelas about? All right, Keith, I know you read Omelas. What's Omelas about? Why is everybody so quiet? Did you guys take a pack not to talk to me? What's going no, on? No, my, my grandmother's trying to tell me what I've got to do today. So I was out real quick. Which one are we on? We're on Omelas. Right. Just need a, quick, a quick ditty. What's it about? Isn't it where the it depends on like the unhappiness of a child or something like. All right, let me lay it out for you. This is a fascinating okay. story, which you probably all didn't get. All right, so there's this perfect town. It's perfect. It's like an amazing town. And you go there and you're like, holy crap, this is an amazing town. I wanna live here. And they have the festival going on and people are parades in the street. And everybody has money and nobody is poor. Everybody has nice cars. Everybody has nice houses. Everything is sweet. And you go in and you're like, I want to move here. And Glenn's like, yeah, hells yeah, I want to live here. And then you go and they say, listen, you can live here. And this is awesome. But we're going to show you something. And in order for you to live here, you have to accept that this thing happens. And if you can accept that this goes on, you're welcome to live here. But you have to accept it. They're like, oh, well, how bad it could it be? This is a perfect place. So they take him down to the basement of like the town hall. And in a cage is a seven-year-old child living in his excrement, deformed, starving to death. And you're like, holy crap, why does that have to happen? And they say, listen, in order for all that perfect stuff to happen up there, this has to happen down here. And you're like, that's baloney that doesn't have to be that way. And they're like, no, no, yes, it does. And you're like, no, 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 it doesn't. And you're thinking, okay, I'm gonna come and I'm gonna save this child in the middle of the night. And the person says, no, no, 
you can save this child, but we're just going to replace it with another child. So then you have to choose, do I stay knowing that this child suffers or do I walk away from OMA loss? So how many of you would walk away? Glenn would? Nancy would? Maya would? Nicole would? See, we all want to be that guy who would walk away, right? How many of you own Nike sneakers or have ever owned Nike sneakers? Glenn? So one day when you have some free time, look at Nike sneakers and look at who makes them and how much money they make a week, right? We wouldn't even make that in a five minute span, right? So this story is about, there's a picture of Nazi Germany and there's a whole bunch of soldiers given the Heil Hitler uh, to Hitler, to the Fuhrer, you know, that thing that they do with the arm. And there's one guy in the picture and he's got his arms folded and he's in the middle of the crowd, right? He's just standing there and he refuses to give the Heil Hitler to Hitler. And we always want to believe that we would be that one person who'd be like, wow, this is nonsense. This is, this guy's full of crap. And this is, he's evil, right? We want to believe that we would be that one guy. But how many times are we not that one guy? Because we get, we get dazzled by, you know, the message or we get dazzled by the, you know, in this particular case in Bert and uh, Omelas, we get dazzled by all the awesomeness out there. And we think, well, if I just don't think about it, right? The same could be true of meat eaters, right? Like we all love cows and pigs and things like that, but I also really love bacon. So I really don't think about pigs when I'm thinking about bacon because I really like bacon, right? So, you know, this story, the purpose of this story is what, what suffers so that we can enjoy something. And, and, and that's a really good point, Nancy. Sometimes we don't know some of the truths in our world, right? We don't know who suffers for our, you know, but sometimes we do. And we still, you know, we still partake or do, right? So that's what that story is about. Harrison Bergeron. Yes, how the clothes are made. Yep, yep, ignorance is bliss. So keep these things in mind as we're going to talk about the stories. Harrison Bergeron, right? The world is finally equal, right? Everybody's equal, but are they, right? So if you're pretty, you have to wear a hideous mask. If you're smart, you have bells that go off in your ears. If you're strong, you have weights that lay you down. Now, if I'm looking at somebody with a hideous mask and weights, then I know, I even know that they're, they must be really handsome and strong, right? So you like the, you can still tell the smart people, the pretty people. If you're a dancer, I, I was thinking of you, Mackenzie H, because um, the girlfriend to Harrison is a dancer, a baller, ballerina, right? So the more graceful you are, the more weights you have to wear, right? So, and, it, and the whole premise is now we're finally equal. You know, now we're finally equal. And then when, when Harrison tries to rise above and tries to get, you know, people, even his own parents don't know what's happening because the bells are going off and they can't remember that it's him, right? And so this is a warning from Kurt Vonnegut about the dangers in making everybody equal. So you have to think about what you think about that. What do you think about that? Is that true? Is that the, is that the path we're on? I really, 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 really liked your breakdown of that story, the way that you explained it and the way that you kind of shortened it. And uh, yeah, I do believe that that's what's going on. I feel like it's all false equality. Like I, everything is false equality. Like we all want to believe that we're equal, but you know, we're always told, oh, there's better out there. You know, that's why you got to work hard. It gives you that motivation to work hard so you can be the best. Yeah, I was, I was actually like going to go That sounds off harsh to, to say, but. Yeah, because we, no matter how equal we try to make things, there's always going to be certain characteristics or advantages that are going to be there that we can't account for. So it's almost like we try to make this equality that really isn't equality. Because if I try to say, all right, I'm going to give you all 
you know, $100, just as an example, that would make us all equal at that moment. But there's certain, I'm just saying it this way, but like, our teacher probably has the advantage of knowing, you know, the best place to, you know, put the money to invest in, where we as students probably don't. And that's where like the equality can't exist until, and this is where I jokingly say, like, until we're all of the same mind. And I don't, I don't want to see us all be of the same mind. You are so, going to love the videos from this week. The I'm one. sorry. I'm a big philosophy kid where you have to discuss this type of stuff. So I No, mean, it's true. And that's, and that is the purpose of literature, right? I mean, think about when Kurt Vonnegut wrote this, right? He wrote this 40 years ago and he was seeing it then, right? Uh, Omelas was written 30 years ago right? That people suffer for our happiness and that we are blind to it. In the lottery, we're looking at traditions that are blind traditions. Nobody has any idea why they do this thing once a year where they stone to death somebody. And like you're, and you're only picked because you picked the short end of the stick, right? There's no, it's not like, you know, it's not like a protest or anything like that. Everybody agrees to this in the community and everybody's like, oh shit, you know, today's the day, you know, we got to pick the thing. I hope it's not me. I hope it's not me. And then, oh crap, it's me. And, uh, and nobody knows why they do it, right? Nobody understands why they're doing this thing or what it means or what it signifies. Like they think it has to do with the harvest, but they're not sure, you know? So, oh, people are talking in the chat. That's exciting. Um, uh, oh, it's going so fast. Um, uh, where did it go? It's easier to uh, not question things than the face changes. We need to rise above it. That's a great point, Liz. That's absolutely a great point. So when we know, right, when we know that something's going on, then we are, we are challenged to fix it. And so literature, one of our, one of the jobs of literature is to bring these topics to light right? What do we do? What do you do in your life? You know, I was raised in a very religious household and um, uh, very uh, Anglican, which is a form of Episcopalian, but English because my mother was English. And um, they did all these things. And when you're a kid, you're like, oh, yes, I need to wear the thing and do the thing and do this. And, that. and then you get older and you're like, huh, why do we do all that stuff? Where did Jesus say to do all that stuff? Like, you know, like you, you, you have to think about and question, like, why do you do things? So that to me is a lottery. It's really changing how we think about things. What about primary substance? What is that about? I liked that one. That one was about a um, a little dilemma, a little rain, a little down rain dilemma. What happened? What happened in the story? Um, he was driving and got stuck in some traffic and... Um, let me go back to it. He doesn't know what to do. Like he's got this dilemma. Like, what do I do? Do I help the day, help that guy? <laughs> right. And how many of us are like, oh, what should I do right now? He he almost become he becomes paralyzed, really, by the choice of like the moral choice, the, the choices he has in front of him. So I heard a lot of favorites for the lottery. Any favorites for primary substance, Harrison or Omalas? I mean, now that I understand Omalas a little bit better, I, now Omalas kind of is like tying with the lottery for me. Like I didn't really understand Omalas as like, now, like now I understand it. I just thought that they were like, they were jumping between the two where like all of a sudden they talk about this kid and then they go back to this perfect world. And then I was like, that, that doesn't make sense, but okay. But now he's the engine, I mean, or they say now, he's the engine. Now, now it makes sense. Now Omalas makes sense, and it's kind of like bugging me because it's like now I want Omalas to be my favorite. But and 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 in these four cases, there's a they in him, right? There's the they. They say that this child has to suffer. They say everybody has to. Be they say there's this tradition. They say that there are these moral dilemmas and making choices to help other people, right? It's the they say. So when we think of antagonist and protagonist, 
who are who's the protagonist who's the antagonist and protagonist in omelas i mean isn't the protagonist us and the antagonist is the person who's trying to convince us to stay in omelas in a sense the they would be like the people of omelas that could be yep absolutely yep Yep. So it doesn't ever, it doesn't always necessarily have to be a character, right? In the story, because we're a character in the story. We as the reader, and there's the narrator or the they that's beyond the story who's telling us and trying to convince us, right? In Harrison Bergeron, you could go a few different ways. You could say that, you know, the protagonist is Harrison and the antagonist is the handicapped or general, or you could say that it's about society, right? and have a bigger, you know, a bigger take on it. So it doesn't always have to be tied to the actual characters in the book. There are these external characters, the people telling the story, those of us reading the story, right? So I wanna give you guys time to talk. I know our class goes so fast. I wanna give you guys time to talk in groups. And what you're gonna do is you are going to talk about, I'm gonna split you up into four groups. They're gonna be random. Group one is gonna talk about Omelas. Two is gonna do Harrison. Three is going to do lottery. Four is going to do primary substance. And what you're going to do is you're going to go through um, uh, the literary elements, right? And you're going to have one um, one worksheet per group of. Um, and remember, there's literary elements, theme, character, plot. But I'm more interested in the literary devices. So you're going to go through the literary devices, find an example of each, and then we're going to come back here at 8:40. And um, and then we're going to talk about them briefly, right? So I want to make sure that you're able to apply those terms because you need those, hint, hint, you need to use those terms in your paper, right? You want to look up the authors, right? Harrison um, is written by Kurt Vonnegut. You want to look up Ursula Le Guin. You want to look up Shirley Jackson. You want to look up Sergio Gutierrez Negron, right? You want to look those folks up, get and figure out if that plays any role. Then you want to look at these devices that we've talked about for this week, and then you're going to talk about the human condition and what they're saying. So let me split you into groups. Where is the breakout rooms? We need four rooms. Divide equally. All right. I will see you at 840. Here they come. Here they come. How exciting was that? Was it fun to talk about your stories? Glenn, I can tell that you were excited. What group were you in, Glenn? Group one? So you were talking about Omelas. I think almost everybody's back. Group three is chatty. Here they come. I think everybody's back. All right, excellent. So let's talk about Omelas. Tell me something exciting about Omelas. What, um, uh, somebody from your group just copy and paste into chat your notes so that folks can uh, take a look at them later when they're writing their papers. But group one, Glenn, I know you were in group one. Tell me what happened there. What happened in the inner sanctum? Um, I don't have the notes. Um, Mackenzie G does, so she's probably going to just be writing it in the chat. Mac G or Mac H? Uh, G. Mac G. All right. So, all right. It's first person. Yep. How about group two? Who is in group two? You're going to paste in your stuff. I was, but I wrote them down, so I just need to type them in. Okay. All right. How about- Same here for group three. Same here. Same here. Okay, group four. Who's our scribe? I have them. I just have to type them in. All right. So while you four are typing in, so, <clears throat> so tell me, are they well-written stories? Like what would be like your raves and faves and your booze? Like what's good about these stories and how they're written? And what were you, are you like, eh? I think Keith indicated something similar, something earlier, which was that he didn't really realize that 
Omalas was happening over top of this kid. Like it was a little disjointed. So you didn't get it on the first reading. And so that's a clarity issue with the writing. And like, this isn't the Bible. Like we can criticize the authors, right? We can say like, um, they use too many big words. Like people, when we read Edgar Allan Poe, everybody thinks they love Edgar Allan Poe because they like the Simpsons version of the Raven. But then when you read Edgar Allan Poe, you're like, ugh, like this is a lot harder than I remember it being because remember there wasn't TV. So he had to like give you the whole picture. There wasn't the Simpsons. So he has to give you the whole picture so that you can get it in your head. Um, so it's okay. You can say bad things or you can say good things. Like what did you really love about um, about the stories and what did you think was complicated or boring? I mean, some stories are boring. Anything, anything written by Herman Melville, like Bobby Dick totally makes me fall asleep. And I teach that every semester. So don't be shy. Don't be shy. What was great? What didn't you like? Oh, you're so quiet today. Nancy, what did you like or dislike in your story that you were in whatever group you were in? Uh, I was in the lottery group. Uh, what I liked is the surprise factor in the story, but what I didn't like is basically how some of it could be like misunderstood. Like, except, like because some sto some those stories are meant to be subjective in some way before you actually read about them more. So it can be kind of confusing, like for the first time reading it. I had to read it like three times to un actually understand the actual meaning behind it. Okay. Okay, good point. Nicole Rissmiller. What story, what group were you in? I was in group two. And what did you think about your story? You guys did Bergeron, right? Um, I thought it was definitely interesting. The ending was a little crazy, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but um, overall, I think it was a good story. You kind of was like, you were able to follow up with the story and actually know what he was talking about as you were reading it. Some authors, when they're writing stories like this, they kind of go a little like out there, but he was, he basically stayed with his topic. So I liked how I could understand it. Do you like the ending? Um, kind of, I guess. I mean, it was definitely something I wasn't expecting, but I kind of like What would be, a, what would be a more suitable ending for that? Or is there a more suitable ending? Like I said, I I don't know about that. It's just definitely was interesting. So when we think about stories, we think about what happens before the story starts and then what happens after the story ends. Mm -hmm. right? So when we think about Harris and Bergeron, we think about what led them to that point in the story where they start telling the story. Right. And then what what could be an alternate ending and fan fiction, which is a thing that lots of people engage in now, especially with the internet, um, you know, where they change the ending or they they alter the ending or they talk about the story after the story. You know, that's something we're going to talk about later this semester. And you're actually going to have the opportunity to do a little bit of that. Um, so a story like Harrison Bergeron has to end really with him dying. Right. There's no other yeah. way to get the point across. He kind of has to die and there has to be something dramatic that happens. But then, you know, what what happens with his death? Right. Like yeah. mom doesn't realize it's him because of her headset. Right. So, you know, what is Vonnegut saying by that? Like this is going to keep going on. And even like and if you think about think about what's going on in our world, right? With Black Lives Matter marches and with what happened at the Capitol, right? Mm -hmm. People make these grand like charges to change something, but what actually changes? You know, it's a comment on that part of our society too. You know, like he made this brave, bold attempt and yeah, you know, what happens in the end. So, um, so 
as you're thinking about these stories and writing your essays, remember that I will take a look at it. You get extra credit if you go to the Learning Center. Um, if you just go on northampton.edu and look for the Learning Center, you can sign up for a writing tutor. You get extra points for that. Um, uh, you have your Flipgrid this week, so you only have to post your post, but you do get extra credit if you do uh, listen to your colleagues and your, your friends. I know some of you will post late, so that might not be possible, but um, you know, listen to each other. And then um, I'm going to keep this window open so that the people who are typing can finish putting in their notes. And then I will see all of you next Monday. Can I? Go ahead, ask questions. I'll be here. Can I go to the Learning Center just for them to um, like clarify my work cited? Because sure. I'm just... okay. Absolutely. You can also ask me. Just remember this golden rule. Anytime you quote, summarize, or paraphrase, if if you try, even if you get it wrong, but you put like the citation in there, that you're not trying to copy, and I can help you, you know, I can help you figure it out. It's when you actually like copy a paper from the internet or buy one. That's my. Yeah. I don't know when it became when it becomes paraphrasing because I understand that you can take a text and put it into your own, but you still need to credit the original thought okay. of how far can you change it before it comes your own thought and well even then you still have to cite it yeah so it's you have to oh wait just always cite. you can never get in trouble for citing too much yeah. <laughs> if you think about it that way right like anything that um like if you're talking about like obelas and you're just talking about the work in general and it's all your own ideas um you know you don't have to cite that but if you have like specific examples which you should um you'll want to cite that Sounds like a plan. All right. All right. Thank you. Have a good one. Have a good week, everybody. So for else? the essay. Yes. Um, so if you said for the first, so we have intro and then the three body paragraphs would be the background. You said and then literary uh, elements and then the last, well, the last body paragraph would be the human condition, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. 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 Um, it helps to do an outline book. first. You said what? It'll help you to do an outline first. And kind of like write out what your ideas are going to be. But am I, or am I comparing both, like two stories that I like from there? Or yep. am I, okay. Two, you get to pick. And it can be from this this pile that we did for this week. Um, you can also include um, A Christmas Carol if you wanted to. And then the stuff that we did last week. Remember Maya Angelou and that you can do you can do those two you can pick from any any of those you can pick two okay well thank you you're welcome have a good week glenn by the way i just wanted to show you the igloo is finished look at that oh it has it had a chair in there uh no that's its little doorway oh that's adorable that is adorable. I but so I'm so excited. The other day I went out hiking and there were these not hiking, I went walking to the store and there were these two kids playing and they were sliding down this huge snow pile because you know Palmerton isn't great about snow. And I was, uh -huh. I was like, when I was a wee a wee tot a thousand years ago, we used to make like we used to make igloos out of big hills like this. And uh and my husband was with me and we were like, and the kids were like slide so then when we came back they had made it into an igloo i was True. like not so exciting and then i tried to fit in it and i didn't and i was like oh i'm so ashamed i'm not as tiny as those little <laughs> boys are the door i would have slid right through it I, well, my husband's like, don't get stuck in there. He's like, they're not, because it was right next to the firehouse. He's like, they, they're not going to be able to get you out. There's going to be an avalanche. I'm like, shut up. Shut up. Okay, it's time to go home. <laughs> time to go home. Fortunately, we live like like half a block. <laughs> so that's great. I love snow. I love snow. Yeah. So. Yep, yep, yep. All righty. Well, once again, have a good one. You too. Have a good week. Bye. Have a good day. Heidi, Nicole, and Mark doing notes or are you just hanging out with me i wanted to say have a good day but i didn't want to interrupt people <laughs> thank you I wanted to listen yeah to her story. i'm sorry the egg. i wanted to listen to the igloo story oh <laughs> we're here for the igloo we're here for the igloo all right well i'll see you guys next week all righty have bye. a good one thank you bye-bye